Yeah, and also, I mean, at this situation, he's thinking he's definitely going to die. I mean, I would. Oh, exactly. This guy is minutes from death. Every you imagine the whale's belly acid, all kinds of horrid things. So, yeah. Verse 3 says, uh, For you cast me into the deep and into the heart of the seas, surrounded me, and the floods surround, surround me. See? All your waves and your billows pass over me. I'm driven away from the sight, yet I, yet I shall again look upon your holy temple. Verse 5, here we go. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. I think Jonah died. You know, it really does, now that we're reading this again, sound like he went into hell. Kind of looks that way, right? I mean, look at that. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Wow. Jeez. The heck is it? I mean, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You know, there. You know, speculation on our part, but other people have gone into hell and come back. They say it's like a prison with bars. You know, really? Yeah, no lie. Well, so. at least I didn't see bars when I died. It was all just black. Well, you didn't go to hell. You went to. <laughs> you just had. You were. <laughs> thank God for that. No, you were born again. Um, he says right here, the next line, you, yet you brought up my life from the pit. Oh Lord, my God, when my life was fainting away, I, I, rem- I for you. go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Don't, don't be, that's, that's, I, I got a weird twist here. Do it. What happens if God was showing him hell? Cause you go, well, John, I don't get it. He believes in God. Why would he go to hell? Even though he's being stubborn and not listening and being a human. Yeah. How would he go to hell? Well, what about this? God showed him hell and said, this is not where I want these Gentiles going that you need to go save and preach me. To John you. North. That is so good. God. This is not where I want all these people to go. They need to believe in me. So go preach to these non-Jews. Listen to me. You're not listening to me. Oh my goodness. You know what? That is such a good uh, hypothesis. Cuz mm. we don't fully know, but we know this that how many people that I've heard say they've seen hell. They've gl- have a glimpse, a glimpse I... of, or they've gone there and they're like nobody should go there, not even Hitler, not the worst of the worst. We don't want them there. Man. It's almost like that changed my the mind of Jonah. And it did, because yes, he was grumpy pants. He still listened to God after this, though. So it worked. He goes, okay, I will go, and I'll do what you say, God. I'm sorry. I don't know know what to tell you, but that is probably one of the best thoughts about it I've ever seen. I just have goosebumps all over my body, and I have this, like, deep feeling in my stomach right now. I don't know what it is. So it's interesting. Man, you know what? That is really actually, like, that is so good. It's interesting. I don't know. Uh, Jess, uh, my lovely wife, my queen, my love, my life, arrows fall upon me. Here we go. She says, don't forget Jonah is a picture of Jesus being three days dead and then resurrecting. That's wow. exa- Yeah, that, no, that's exactly right. Knowledge bomb there from Jess. Yeah, great, great point. No, that's exactly what it is. So much imagery here. No, that's exact. No, that Jonah is like. Remember, he even like. Remember, you remember in the book of uh, math? I think it's math. He even said he goes somewhere in the Bible. Like, and somewhere in there, this is so good. Mm-hmm. He said, like Jonah is going into the belly of the fish, so the Son of Man will be in hell for three days. Wow, isn't he, that yeah? Because didn't Jesus quote Jonah in this? That's what I'm linking saying. Linking himself to Jonah. Look, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's exactly right. I mean, Whoa. you got to you got to make it. You know, these spin studies are wild. 
Like it's almost like God. Well, it's not almost like it is. God pointed us here, and mm-hmm. then for you to call me, you called me on the cell phone. You didn't know I was live. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't see anything on my phone at all. No, he called me. He said, "Hey, I'm home. Ready." Yeah, so, Jen goes, "Are you going to go live with John?" And I was like, "Oh my gosh, you're right." I answered the phone live on air, and I said, "Jonah too." And here we are. <laughs> that's, a, that's a yeah. What the heck, man? That's awesome. So, I looked. That's a, that's amazing. The whole idea. Let's keep reading, reading, but we'll get to the last. Uh, we'll get to Galatians and finish. But yeah, um, we will shut. Let's shut the show down and then redo a new one just so it stays in order. Yeah, that's fine. For anybody with us, we're gonna shut her down in a sec, and then we'll go live again in the next three minutes. Amen. He says, uh, "When I when my life was fain, fading away, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you, into your holy temple. There Those who pay." And those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, but I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. It's almost like he's seeing this and he's waking up and going, holy moly, holy moly. But look at this, though. This is salvation belongs to the Lord. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Explanation mark. Quote, Jonah. Well, Jonah would never say that. No, so, you know what Jonah would say, Brian Nitch? Tell Jonah me. would say salvation b- belongs to the Jews, because he's all of he's he made. He's all about he, the Jews. He's very Jewish. We know that at the end of the story, he does not even want to speak to the Gentiles. He doesn't like Gentiles. He doesn't like John North from from Eugene, Oregon. Right. He doesn't want to preach salvation to the Gentiles. He's man. He's Jewish within and out. I mean, to the point where he's like racist towards other non-Jews. You know. And, yeah. And I mean, look, he's he's grumpy pants. I like to say grumpy pants. You know, I've heard some people use some really mean words to Jonah. I get offended by that. Don't talk about my boy like that, okay? Because he's a little he's just a little grumpy pants at the end. But notice how Jonah says salvation belongs to the Lord. That's not something he would say. That's something that the Holy Spirit is speaking through Jonah and and really maybe just changing his heart. And Jonah's like kind of like um, eating the grass for seven years. And saying, salvation is for Jesus. That's the point of salvation, is we live for God. God doesn't live for us. Oh, that's that's a great, great uh, analogy, like, right? Nebuchadnezzar, yeah. Like what he did with Nebuchadnezzar. <clears throat> God, lives, <laughs> God lives for us. That is awesome. Think about that. You want to read the last line? Verse 10. Verse 10. And the Lord spoke to the fish. Can you, who is who? Who cares about Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and all these other movies out there that people get so crazy about? Star Wars, Star Trek. <clears throat> who cares about? <laughs> I love it. Hey, look, see, wait, where's the Star Trek? There it is, right there. Yeah, exactly. This is. Look at this. And the Lord spoke to the fish. Look at God. that. It's when a bird falls from the sky. Birds sing to God. These are Bible quotes. Yeah, you can't make this stuff up. It's amazing. And it vomited Jonah out upon the dry land. Now, look at that. I mean, how amazing is this line? I know we got to go because we got to get into Galatians here. But in the Lord spoke to the fish. Think about that. God didn't just say, out with Jonah. God said, hey, fish. And we don't know what God said to the fish. Right. How fascinating is that? We don't know. It just said he spoke to him. Fish, I created you. Right. I love you. Oh, he, yeah, you know. You Spin know he's saying out. some fun stuff. He's like, I love you. <sighs> hey, and the fish, dude. Said, and the fish, and the fish, the fish did. The fish did what he said. That means, wait, look at this, man. Fish knew God and knew what God said for the fish to spit him out. Come on, John. You think that's true? Smith song. It takes two. <laughs> if the fish didn't know God and didn't know what he was saying, Brian, why would the fish spit him out? He would No, he would have kept him in there and swallowed him and judged. Oh, that's so good. Look, you said, I man, you've said something powerful. God used the fish in hell to change the mind of Jonah. So he would go preach and obey the Lord. And then he communicates with the fish, his creation. Yeah. And the fish just goes, okay, Lord, I'll partner with you, whatever you want me to do. You're 100% right. 
How could a hater say the opposite? If I looked at a fish and I said, hey, fish, do this. The fi fish is not going to listen to me. Fish doesn't know what I'm talking about. Right. I can't look at a shark and say, hey, shark, don't attack me. You, uh, No, we can't. We can't. We can, in the name of Jesus, but... We better believe. No, the Lord, he, look, Jesus always worked with his creation. Remember he said, peace be still, and the waves stopped, and the wind stopped blowing, mm -hmm. right? He, he brought quail to the Israelites, mm. right? I mean, how many times? He opened the water, and now he's saying to the fish, hold, hold up, buddy. He brought manna, excuse me, he brought manna, of course. He brought food to Elijah by birds in the cave. Jeez. I mean, what else can we say? He works he with. Donkey. He talked through a donkey. He, he exactly. He, he talked to the donkey. Uh, he loves his creation, and they work. His creation loves him. Well, you know what? You got a dog that passed away when you were a kid. You should like this line. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say there. We don't need to go down that rabbit hole, but again, it always, I always lean more toward the animals go to heaven. But uh, what a great line, ten is, and what a great chapter. I know that was awesome. <laughs> well that's awesome glad i got to get on this that last one we'll, we'll... yeah let's uh wow what a chapter let's shut her down okay and then we'll uh type in all the proper things on the on the new um study i really hope everyone stays with us though yeah really hope uh well jess has one more comment she said uh whale emoji i like it torres with the throw up emoji and then Jess said, and then Jonah was bleached white. Yeah, I remember Brett did a whole, a whole, like a 20 minute, um, he spent 20 minutes one service on how scientifically this is, of course, right. And the fact that he was bleached white and what that means and the acid in the fish and all this stuff on how it's 100% possible that this happened, even for three days. But, of course, we don't even need the science behind it because it's in the Bible. But it's pretty cool to to hear as well. Do you want to pray it out, Brian? Sure. Lord, we love you. Thank you for everything you are and bringing this all together with timing and love and joy, putting it all, bringing these amazing points about the whale. You're so wonderful, Lord. We thank you that you you made this wonderful creation. Of course you communicate. Of course you guide it. Of course you you know, direct it. <laughs> we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, we'll be back in literally three minutes. God bless and salute. Salute. Yeah, that was. Great.
All right. We just got done. If you're listening like two years from now, we just got done doing a uh, spin study podcast. That was fun. Yeah, we had a really good time. So um, we just literally just did it two, two seconds ago. We shut it off and then uh, uh, sparked this one up. So uh, heck yeah. We'll but he gets in here. Ah, oh, maybe, maybe there's a little song. Here's my intro song. This is, this is interesting, by the way. Hans Zimmer, The Burning Bush. Ooh. He's really good, Hans Zimmer. Yeah, he did. He must have done maybe like a Christian movie sa- hmm. soundtrack. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Mike check one two chat board come on in. All right. Well, Brian, you want to pray it in? Yeah, I will. Yeah, Lord, we love you. Thank you for Galatians. Thank you for Paul. Thank you for sending the Holy Ghost for the and bring the word you breathed and inspired the men to write this amazing, amazing book. Galatians, Paul to our brothers in the city of Galatia. Thank you. And we, we will receive whatever word you have for us, Lord, the written, holy Rama, the now word right now in Jesus name that it blesses us and everyone with us. Amen. 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 Beautiful prayer, Brian. Thank Absolutely. you. God is good. Amen. Amen. All right, let me just pull it up here. Galatians chapter th- three. Yeah, Galatians three. We're gonna we start in verse ten. We actually already started. Galatians. Oh, we did. You're right. Yeah. It's part two. So yes, part two. For those that are listening, um, if you're listening like five years from now and you stumbled upon here. Uh, go to the one before this, because we did already read half, mm-hmm. pretty much, of this chapter. So we didn't miss any words. Yeah. Uh, we haven't missed one word. No, no. And if we have, tell us. We want to go back and read it. We'll even read the, the. I, yes. Yes, I always tell the famous story of Brett doing that one day. And someone emailed him and said, you missed a line like a year ago. And he went back and read it before the service. So. He's like, oh, yeah, I need to do that. Yeah, he's in Greece. Yeah, I've been commenting. Every once in a while, comment. Oh, he's they yeah. like, you know, he's been liking it, and he's Good. having a great time over there. His prophecy update's pretty soon. It just came out today. Did it? Okay, good. I haven't seen it yet. About 20 minutes in. If you yeah, don't know, yeah. We're talking about Athey Creek Pastor uh, Brett Metter. Love that guy, man. Oh, look, Jen Knight. Jen, hi. With us. Amen, amen. Let's go. Yes. Well, I don't want to keep uh, you, Brian, from Jen, and I don't want to... You know what we're doing right now? As well, so we'll, we'll get to it. Yeah, what are you guys doing? We just... Okay, I made chicken wings. Oh. Yeah, they're actually really good. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, you are from Texas. <laughs> oh, my wife's back. Hey, Jess. My love, my wife, my queen. Yeah. Well, our wives are on the chat board, Brian. How lucky are we, by the way? I love it. God is so good to us, isn't he? We're not lucky. We're blessed. We're blessed. And we're live on Facebook. Oh, Facebook. Hi, everybody. Zuckerberg liking Trump now, by the way. Yeah, you know, I had a dream last night that I was neighbors to Mark Zuckerberg. That, that, whoa. It's all connecting right now. Just saying. It's weird. Yeah. I interrupted you. What were you saying, though, originally after the chicken wings? Um, I was just, all I was saying was, is, um, they were good. <laughs> oh, we were watching the gladiator. Oh, 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 nice. Watching gladiator. I just told my wife the other day, I said, I think it's, it's time to sit down Lincoln and watch gladiator with Lincoln. John, it's time. It's time. Yeah. yeah it's time. Especially with the new one coming out in December. That's why we're watching it. Yeah. Get on board people. You know, actually... There was a clip on YouTube of the end scene of Gladiator. Oh, no. The cl- the last scene. And I clicked it. It's downstairs on the big screen. It was all the way up. Volume was all the way up to max. 
And you know, usually movies that you have to watch the full movie to cry at the end. Oh yeah. So you gotta get like into the movie and you gotta get there mentally, right? It's hard just to watch the end of the movie for 10 minutes and get emotional. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. But Gladiator, we watched the last 10 minutes of it. I was bawling. I was bawling. Like, to the point where I had to stand up and pace. You mean the regular Gladiator, the first one? Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, you know right where it's at. I was, I, dude, a couple tears came down while I was watching the fighting scene, the first fighting scene. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, why? I love... These men dedicate their lives, you know, and necessarily that Rome is good for conquering the world, but still like they were, they had, they had valor and patriotism and they loved their king and their general. Where is that in this world? We love Jesus and our king and our, and the Holy ghost and the people of God like that. Yeah. Just switch that for Jesus. Amen. It's not about Rome. It's about the kingdom of God. Fight the battles, not with sword, right, and spear, but with the spirit. Get on your knees. Shout to Jesus for victory over, you know, anything. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. God is good. Up, Ryan, God is so good. Jesus is king. He's the great I am. Yeah, he is, right? That me and God, me and the Father are one. Amen. Oh, just, that one guy that got stabbed overseas, New Zealand. Mari Mar. Mari the best by the way i've been tagging you a bunch of stuff by the way Hmm. god is not orthodox god is not catholic god is not he starts naming off all these things and he's an i think he's a big orthodox church yeah he's kind of coming at himself even he said god is lord the great i am let's go the trinity the godhead just starts yelling just i love it you know and it gets you jacked up but he was just saying what was i saying he was saying um Oh, he was talking about John 1, 1. You know, he said, notice how Jesus says, I am, I am the father. He puts himself before Yahweh. Mm. He doesn't say the father and I are one. He says, I and the father are one. I mean, that's why they hated him. Because he put himself in the God group. Mm -hmm. But he was God. He's always been God. Like like mm-hmm. Marmari says, it's not about your religion, man. It's your faith in the king, mm. Jesus. Yeah. And because you believe in him, Jesus said you believe in the Father. Mm. Period. Right. So praise the Lord. Amen. Well said, Brian. Verse 10. You're up. You want to do it? Yeah. All right. Verse, uh, verse ten. Well, okay. A little recap. Let me just let me just say this. Remember, yeah, Paul's but... talking to the Galatians. They believed the word of God. They saved. The, they loved the word of God, but yet they've fallen back into the works of Judaism, into the works of the of the religion where you have to sacrifice. So Paul's trying to remind them: Jesus is the way. No more sacrifice is needed. The law doesn't redeem you. It doesn't sanctify you. It doesn't give you righteousness. It's only by faith. In the one man, Jesus Christ. The lamb has been slaughtered. He has. For you and me. I think what is it? The lamb has been slain. Slain, yeah, slain. Slain. Yeah. From the found it says from the foundations of the world, he was slain for us. Yes. Amen. And amen. Let's get to it. ESV chapter three. Verse ten. Yeah. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. Oh, we've read this. I think we're on verse 15. But you know what? Let's read it again. Are under a curse. For it is written, quote, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Ooh. I think you're right. Yeah, for it is written, Cursed by everyone who does not abide by by all things written in the book of the law, and do them. Mm. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith, but the law is not of faith. Rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, quote, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree so that the Christ Jesus, the blessing of Abraham, might come 
to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Yeah. So that's interesting how they say like the the law is a curse. I could be uh, wrong about that. But you got to remember Adam and Eve chose to listen to the devil. They chose the Antichrist. They did choose it. And therefore sin came into the world. Yeah. The devil had the deed to the earth, to the world. And because of that, the law was created. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't say it's a curse. It says curse is everyone who doesn't live by everything written. Right. Verse 10. But you become a curse. 13, 13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. Right. Well, the mem- yeah. And so what the law has the curse in it. Mm. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and the blessing. So it, it, there's a curse in the law if you don't follow it. Right. You know okay. what I'm saying? Got so it. yeah, Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight shows the it's a blessing is if you follow this way, and if you don't follow this way, it talks about the curse and uh, and so on. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Uh, we on fourteen? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, we're on fifteen. You want to hit it, Brian? Yeah, we'll do. Um, here we go. To give a human example, brothers, even with a man made covenant, no one annuls it, meaning wipes it out, or adds to it. Once it has been ratified or signed. Mm-hmm. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does oh not s- that Brian. Look, it says verse six. How did this, how did you get in there? It says now the promise were made to Abraham and to his offspring, Brian Nitsch. Yes. How Thank did you, you, John. Get in the Bible? Jesus. Jesus. He, he put me in there. He wrote, he wrote you in here too. But I'm being serious, though. Yeah. You well, know no offspring. I'm, you know, I'm smiling right now. I'm being serious. Yeah. Everybody listening right now is the offspring of Abraham. We are grafted in. Amen. We walk with Christ. We are in the family of Abraham because we choose Jesus, the great I am, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yeah. Look, you're right. Hmm. Look, look it, it, this, it, we're going to read... And we're going to prove it right here. It says, and now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, referring to many, but referring to one. And to your offspring, who is Christ. Verse 17, this is what I mean. The law which came 430 years afterward does not annul a covenant previously ratified by God as to make the promise void. Now, so what he's saying is God gave the promise and the covenant to Abraham, but he gave the law 430 years later to Moses. The law doesn't change the covenant of Abraham. Mm -hmm. God promised Abraham that he would bless Abraham and his offspring Mm. which is Christ. Mm. Amen. Amen. Um, fifth, uh, 18 for in the inheritance comes by the law. It is, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Well, excuse me for if the inheritance came, comes by the law, it no longer comes by the, a promise or by a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. Not by Mm. the law, right? Mm. Verse 19, why then the law, it was added because of transgressions. So why then the law? It was added because of transgressions until the offspring, which is Jesus, should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels by an an intermediary. Mm. Now, a human, that'd be a human. If, right? Wouldn't that be Paul who's writing the Bible right now? Well, he's, ta- I, he's talking about uh, the angels came and brought the word. They brought the word to, to, to people. And you're, yeah. Remember the, the, the angels were in place through angels by 
Yeah, so yeah. Let me, let's let's do this again. Let's reread it. It says, uh, and it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Jesus is the intermediary, right? See, 20 says, now an intermedi intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Oh, see, John, just keep reading the Bible. Your answer will be there. See, look, now an enemy implies more than one, but God is one. Lo, there's the Trinity. Exactly. <laughs> right there. Yeah, exactly. There's the Godhead right there. Now an intimate intermediary. Intermediary, yeah. More than one, but God is one. Amen. Amen. You know, and it always reminds me of Michael the Archangel defeating the devil in the end. It's not victory to Michael. Yeah, no. It's victory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, Maximus wins the war, and what do they do? Honor Caesar. Mm -hmm. God is gets the glory. You know, right. it's his power. It's his glory. Yeah, nobody's, I mean, we'll shake Michael's hand up there and say thank you. You know, nobody's got more respect that, to Michael than we have for him. Yes. But, but we bow down to the king who defeated the devil. Amen. Boy, isn't that true? Oh, he took hell back and he said, give me the keys. I got this. Sorry, buddy. You're out. Yeah. 21 says, is, is the law then contrary to the promises of God? Certainly not. For if a law had been given that could give life, let me repeat that. If mm -hmm. a law had been given that could give life, mm -hmm. then righteousness would indeed be by the law. But see, but see, as eternal life they're talking about now, anybody reading this going, well, wait a minute, I don't understand. You know, my favorite person in the Bible is King David, and he, you know— did a pretty darn great job on earth, made some big mistakes, but he did some of the law. He loved God. How does he, I don't get it. How does he not have eternal life? Because even David had to wait for Christ to be risen Yeah, from Abraham's bosom into eternal life through into heaven. Right? It's even, Jesus' yeah. blood that took everybody to heaven, that takes us up now to heaven. It's the blood of the lamb so David did not have eternal life through law. He actually didn't even not have eternal he he had Jesus had to die on the cross. Yeah. For David to go to heaven. Exactly right. Am I right about that, Brian? 100%. Yeah, 100%. Look at the next line. It literally says that same thing. It says this. But the scripture imprisoned everything, the law, right? The scripture imprisoned everything under sin. Right, right there. Right so there. so that the yeah. promise by In, faith Go oh, ahead. Wow. So, no, see, no, so that no. the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Right. There it is. So the scripture, the law itself encapsulated all man. Mm -hmm. It said, look, all man is under this because you can't live any other way. You can't be it, good. And it's and showing why, you you're bad. And exactly. And that's why in Matthew 1330, I think, 1330, somewhere in the Bible, it says that, you know, all the prophets— of the Old Testament are in the kingdom of God. All the prophets and those who believed in the Old Testament, east to west, north to south, are in the kingdom of God. They're in the kingdom of God when Christ died and were freed from the other part of Hades into heaven. Bingo. Yeah, they are, by the way, all the prophets, all the saints, where are they? In the kingdom of heaven. What about bad prophets, John? No, it doesn't say... False prophets. See, the Bible makes it very clear. False prophets. Now, it doesn't say false prophets. It says prophets. Yeah. And look, it, it, look, there, look, there are prophets of God, right? That that let's say even now mess up. There are people of God who mess up. Nuns are perfect. No, no one. Only one. God, Yahweh, Jesus. Mm. Amen. So you got to believe. He, give it. Look at it. Says twenty two. Clearly, Galatians three twenty two. Tell this to everybody. Given to those who believe. Doesn't say have said the hail mary fifty times. Have gone to church one hundred twenty five times. Have given all their money to to the church. It says doesn't say that. That's great. Give money. Bless people. Give your time. Right. Mm -hmm. for, ask, ask for forgive. Uh, you know. Repent. But what it says is, if you believe, Christ mm -hmm. is given to us. Yeah. Now, therefore, 23, now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, imprisoned until the coming faith would be revealed. 
right? But is that beautifully said or what? It's kind of what we're talking about here, you know? It's yeah. It's fascinating, you know? It's such a beautiful line. Imprisoned under the law. 24 says, so then the law was our guardian until Christ came. It in order that we might be justified by faith. It it's our guardian. It like it's our schoolmaster in the King James. It yep. taught us. It led us as best as we could. Right? 25 says, but now that faith has come. Yes. In, and in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a sense too, like another layer of it. Maybe this is me just being kind of fixated on the whole just Old Testament people into Abraham's bosom before Christ is risen and all that. I'm just fascinated and all that. I almost kind of look at this as well as that the uh, believing in the law and trying your best to do the law is believing in Yahweh. And that was the guardian to get you into Abraham's bosom to then therefore bow to Christ when he died. Right. And to rise into heaven. As we learned about a few chapters ago, Brian, that it came into heaven. What was that Bible verse that was fascinating, that paragraph that we talked about? Remember you said, see, here's why I think Abraham's bosom went oh, in. Oh, when Paul, yeah. Paradise, paradise went into heaven. It's not just empty right now. Maybe it is. Yeah. But you believe it went into heaven. Oh, the third heaven, the third right. heaven conversation. Because Paul was taken up into the third heaven, and mm. it says he was taken into to paradise. Right. Right. And then he, could, then he saw things that he wasn't allowed to speak of. I mean, he was in heaven. So that's why many believe, and others, and myself as well, that heaven in paradise, the kingdom of heaven, the 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 Jerusalem, the the, the city in heaven that mm. that Moses talked about, mm. and paradise, Abraham's bosom merged together. Oh, beautiful! What a, what a pic, what a picture! Isn't God just He's a genius? So through these Old Testament cats, right? The guardian, the Old Testament, the the laws are a guardian of life. Yes. And to get you into the place that is not on the bad side of the wall. Oh, it's it's beautiful. Follow it's, his ways. Here's the book. Here's the way. And now you're like, well, now we it's not the guardian. No, it doesn't guard us now, but it it still leads us. It still teaches us. Jesus, the Holy Ghost is our guardian. He is the one who who shows us things, who teaches us yeah. things. But of course, we go back to the book. We go back to the law. We go see the ways of God. They're still in the Old Testament. Go, go dig, John. Go dig whoever else, myself. We should dig in there because the, the promises of God are in there. And, Some of them are hidden. I love it. And the, and the guardian now is going to preach the gospel. See, look, the Jews had work. And, right. and, and either way, we always say that. But even the Gent there was many Gentiles. And I want to get to my wife's comments here in a sec. Even the Gentiles did laws and, you know, put the work in. Like, my point is this. There was some work you had to do back in the day, you know, Old Testament times. And there's, I can, I can make a case there's just as much work now. Now, I understand works don't get you into heaven. They're, they're just like dirty rags. But there's work. Yeah. You know how I know this? Well, not only does Jesus tell us to go preach the gospel, to go out there and preach to the world. But look at Paul. Look at Jesus. Look at Paul. We got work to do, baby. So this is not a kick your feet up on the lazy boy and, oh, Jesus died. The lamb's been slayed. I'm good. Love it. Let's put some work in. Uh, my wife's comments here says, what, uh, what David had at all, what David had at all was by faith, not the law at all. Yeah. What and then the second one is what about the Pharisees that kept the law so strongly they did not have faith? Well, if you remember, Jesus interacted with those people, and they were there's plenty of them throughout the time. Jesus interacted and said, You are an empty coffin. You mm -hmm. are like a viper. Right? You are your father is the devil. He literally said that. And these are religious Pharisees who keep in the law. And remember, they're the guys who are like, uh, they're the ones who did everything perfect without faith, without believing the, you know, having faith in God and who he was. They just were slaves to the process. So I don't mm -hmm. know. I mean, obviously, God, I mean, selects people with and everything. But if they didn't have faith, well, I mean, 
later on in Hebrews, we're going to write verse four, chapter four, chapter three and four. He's like, they lost it because they didn't have faith. They didn't enter promise because they didn't have faith. So you, the currency of heaven is not killing a bull and offering it or killing a ram or whatever. The currency of faith, excuse me, the currency of heaven, John, is faith. Mm-hmm. So no matter what you're doing, they needed to do it in faith. If they believed in faith that the Messiah was coming and they were doing their stuff in faith, yeah, they're in. The promise was in Genesis, Genesis chapter 3. The one will come and stamp on your Satan's head. That is the promise to Abraham, right? So uh, I don't know, man. If they didn't have it, they didn't faith, that's not God's way. You know, so that's between them and hey, God. I, w- I would answer my wife this, and she brings up a great question with a great discussion. And of course, it all goes back. It, I love how she mentions David, too, because it all goes back to the heart. We talk about David's heart. Yeah. And then also bridges me into, you know, look, let's read 20 again together, because this is kind of what we're talking about here. It says, um, so then the law was our guardian until Christ came in order that we might be justified by faith. Now, I know that we're talking about really the whole chapter here, but that's that's a line right there, the guardian, the law, until Christ came, and that's kind of the discussion here. So t- Jess brings up a great question about the law, but it's by faith that gets you into Abraham's bosom back then, not the law. But I do think, though, the law is in the Bible, right? Second mm-hmm. Kings 20, uh, 22.8 yeah. found the, the Bible back then, which was— you know, of course, not completed, but it was the, um, yeah, you know, the testament at the time that was probably yeah, the five books: Genesis, five. Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Oh my gosh, we're doing it wrong. It, Here it is. Yeah, we're we're messed up. We're sinning. We're totally off track. They stripped their clothes off. They hit the floor. They cried out to the Lord, "Forgive us." They <laughs> repented of their sin because they weren't doing the law right. They weren't following the Bible correctly. Right. And then they had like a two-month church service celebration um, that's a beautiful thing. So like Jess brings up a great point, and maybe the answer to that is because the law is still the Bible, and if you believe in the law and you're doing it out of love for Yahweh and you know the Christ soon to come, that that's the same as David having the heart for God then of course, get into paradise. And so that would be kind of my response to that amazing question that Jess brings up. I agree. Right? Because you could do the law and not care about it, not believe in Yahweh, and Jess is right. It ain't getting you nowhere. 100%. But are you stripping down naked, halfway naked, like King, 2 Kings 22.8? Yeah, exactly. They call, they cry out, even the young, right? Uh, Josiah or... or, or. Yeah, who's the one that found it? Um, Helkiah. Helkiah. I, Helkiah. I, I said it for so long wrongly. Yeah, Hel. Yeah, yeah, Helkiah. Helkiah. You said I think you said Heli Helikiah or Helikiah or something. Yeah, Helkiah. Helkiah. That, that's who did it, and they were like, "No, they tore their clothes." They're like, "We found the right way to live." That's uh, the guardian to guard uh, their lives. That's the guardian. That, yeah. that that story, and then King Josiah was like, "Oh, how how exciting! Could you imagine?" So it wasn't the law that saved them; it was the law that guarded the promise, the blessing, and a righteous life. Oh, uh, Jess is so right. I'm so glad she typed that. Isn't it? It's like, yeah, bring, yeah, exactly. Thanks, baby. So the, it's great... remember, it's a process. Is the always by faith? It was always by faith. Abraham was by faith to show us the way, and the law guarded people from the life of sin. That's oh, beautiful. All together right now. It's all, and it all goes back to David's heart. Oh, the it's... Old Testament, if you look up, if you type it in Google right now, Old Testament on Google, you know what, you know what pops up? David's heart. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to try it. That, no, you're 100% right. I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna put Old Testament. Look, I'm telling you this. You're if you're not wrong, you're you're not. You're 100 not wrong. The heart of a man is everything, mm. right? The Bible says that in your heart is where what you think, how you believe, and that's what your life comes up. 
That's where the life force comes out. Guard your heart, Proverbs says, for out of it flow the issues of life. Mm. So it's, remember, so many people, John, are just about, let's just go to church, check that box, I'm good for the week. Yeah, right. Man, that's a wrong it's heart, funny. dude. Some people, you know, John, you love David so much. You're just like a fanboy. You know who loved David? Jesus. Why did you get circumcised? You know, you're 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 a Gentile now in the covenant of Christ. You don't. Jesus was circumcised. Mm. See it, and I could go on, right? Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Everything is all about Jesus. Mm. So, if someone came at me the other day about getting my son circumcised. Why well, have demons still attacking that post I made a year ago when Lincoln got circumcised? They still comment, by the way. They still comment bots, demon bots. A year ago, they're still commenting on me getting Lincoln Levi circumcised. How, Levi. how could you? It's really weird. Horrible. I respond because they're fake demons, but yeah, there's so many reasons to respond. Yeah, but a good one is because Jesus was. You know, hundred percent. Yeah, but you know, David killing Goliath, it's just bloody, and I don't like, you know, where was that one guy on our team that didn't like the shirt we came out with? That's offensive, and I don't like focusing on death. And Dare I say that. Justin? Justin, right? It's like, you know who loved that? Jesus. Hey, he brings it up. And it, goes always, it always goes back to Christ. Look, I mean, it's always Christ, John. Always Christ. Couldn't you say the same thing, though, Brian Neitch? To, that do we love Justin to death? Forget his last name. Of course we do. Something I should have said. Yeah, but you know what? What are you offended that Michael the Archangel throws the devil into the fire? <laughs> you did say that, I think. I mean, literally, if you're <laughs> offended that David killed Goliath, then you're basically telling me you're offended that God killed uh, the devil. He, he will. He's going. Look, I'm telling you, it's <sighs> be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. Like you can't too many people nowadays think that the Christian the Christian Bible says to lay lay over and be just weak and soft. Mm. Turn the other cheek doesn't mean be weak and soft. You know what it means? Have mercy on that person, forgive them until you need to act. Right? If oh, they keep so. if they keep yeah. they smacking you in the face, they keep smacking you in the cheek, it's time to time to act. I got something for you. Go ahead. You can see Goliath in, in heaven. Mm, talk to me. I, I just want to say something real quick. Go ahead. He got knocked out by the rock. He was not dead. Maybe, hey. When when David was, uh, hear me out for a sec. All right, well, let's listen. Is when Goliath David in heaven? Was When David was walking over to Goliath, you don't think there's a chance that Goliath was laying down, even though he has demon blood in him? From right, the Nephilim and the demons having sex with the women, and you know, all the things in Genesis chapter six, I think, six, four, five. Bear with me somewhere in the Bible. I love it. You don't think there's a chance Goliath was going, The God of David is the only God, and he's a living God, and I was wrong. There's no way that that little kid could have knocked me out. Wow. I believe in God. And then he got his head cut off. I mean, John, you might be, I can't say that's wrong. Like Jonah repented. Look, how many people have, I, look, I can't. You're bringing up questions that are very difficult to answer, but they're yeah. not, they're, they're hard to struggle. They're, we can, those are struggle with questions, but we can't say they're, they're wrong. The answers are, I don't know. I mean, you got a, what? It probably took David a minute to walk over before he got, grabbed the sword. You got, got a you got a minute, Brian. You got one minute laying on the ground to go, oh, man. Uh, he might have ran 40 seconds. We'll give him 45 seconds. 45 seconds. But you imagine that time? You think about this. You just get pinged. I know we, we're finished, right? We only have two or three scriptures left, but he just got pinged in the head. By and little... he, either he's cursing God or he goes, wow, a little five foot eight guy with a rock destroyed the 10 foot me. I thought I was powerful. I guess the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is everything. And maybe he said, oh. I, I I, apologize. You are God. I believe in you. Maybe. Oh, my gosh. I mean, he look. And I people are like, well, he never, he never got circumcised, John. <laughs> he never got baptized. <laughs> I'm telling you, you might. You know, I'm 99% I'm of me is leaning to the one way. But one, I have 2 or 3%, 5%. 
that one percent that he could have got saved is what Jesus is talking about, Brian. You're so right. The fact that you're leaving one percent out there because that's one percent of love in your heart saying, I, 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 if he did, amen. Love your neighbor, defeat wow. the enemy, protect your family, but love your neighbor. Glory to God. We're not supposed to hate Goliath. No. So, but that's the thing that, you know, Justin's right. Maybe Justin is right. We're not supposed to hate Goliath. No, you're right. We're supposed to defeat the enemy, though. Oh. So everybody out there that says, I hate Goliath. No, 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 no. Get that hate out of your heart. Right. right. Love your neighbor. Right. Hey, look at me. Love your neighbor. Right. Yeah, that's why, that's why people who think that believer, re, true believers, we're talking people who know Jesus, right? He said eternal, you have eternal life if you know Jesus. Mm. People who like that, they know the mercy of God. Mm. And just because you're a, quote, bad person, you want to destroy the people of God, that's horrible. Mm -hmm. Or anyone. Look, look at Paul. He was... He was persecuting the church he said it i was zealous for the things of the judy of judaism yeah, which is wrong they're on facebook you know you always make me nervous on facebook here brian going i can't believe john wants goliath in heaven i can't why would john say that is goliath in heaven he's so stupid what's the difference between what's the difference between goliath and paul before paul as paul was murdering christians you tell me the difference that's pretty tough i mean oh. they were doing the same thing I mean, kind of, yeah. Like Paul said it. I was murdering Christians. I proved of Stephen's murder. So 45 seconds from David to get there to there, I pray that Goliath asked God for forgiveness. Yeah. Could have been longer. You're right. If he's not in heaven, that's fine with me. Yeah, me too. You know, later, Goliath. Maybe David, he knocked him out. God's victorious, but uh, I don't know. What a fascinating conversation. Yeah, I know. What a fascinating conversation. Look, it, that shows me the heart transformation of you of you and anyone me too saying this evil person mm -hmm. i mean you, you know almost a nephilim giant whatever but still having mercy on someone who is so evil and and obviously deceived in what they're doing right mm -hmm. steered the wrong way as a kid and lived that way the whole life Still mm. saying, oh, I want, I want God to have mercy on them. That's what happens in the end. We're not going to be in heaven rejoicing on the day where people are going to hell forever mm. in the lake of fire going, yay, nobody's cheering. You know what's wow. happening? Mm. Tears are flowing. That's fascinating. Because in the book of Revelation, you read this one line. You're like, this is strange. Jesus will be pouring out tears, John. You know why? Because it says this. In that day... I will have to remove all tears. Mm. It's a horrible day. The worst day ever is still to come. It wasn't the fall. Of course, that was a bad day, right? But the worst day is when Jesus says to all of his daughters and all of his sons, all of the lives out there, the Lincolns, the Brian Juniors, the Nathans, the Levi's, everybody, the mm. Reagans, the people, our sons and daughters, the ones who don't choose him, he'll have to say, I have to send you to the lake. Ah, that's bad. That's sad. But guess what? Mm. You know, we're going to be all balling. But he says, I'll have to, I'm gonna, we'll get there. It's in a few, it's a few books from now. Book of Revelation He's going to say, I, I'll remove, I will wipe away all tears because it's sadness, the grief. He's mm. going to supernaturally fix that. So, yes, we want Goliath in heaven. We want evil people to change. But that's the whole point. We want God's mercy to be shown in their hearts because he's so good. The Bible says that his goodness, John, leads us to him. That's the answer. We see how good he is, and we want others to see how good he is. Oh, geez, Brian. Oh, you got me speechless right now. It's, anyway, that's coming, dude. That's, uh, that's intense, man. Well, let's read. Let's keep reading. Yeah, I know. Isn't that tough? That's a, I know. That's another. That's a whole another podcast to talk about because th he's so good. Right. And he wants everyone. He, that's why he says, look, do you remember one more thing? Do you remember Ruth? <laughs> Ruth yeah. was in Moab. Moab was a city of lust, fornication. They, ba they burned babies. Mm -hmm. It was just like today in the United States. 
drunkenness. Yeah. She was in Moab without a husband for 10 years. I'm sure she had to sell herself. Who knows what happened? All I know is this. God said, Ruth, he, you know he whispered, come on, follow Naomi. So Ruth says, Naomi, I'm going to be your people. They're going to be my people. Your God is my God. And God mm -hmm. said, you know what God said? Yes. Now you're going to be part of the line of Jesus. I don't care about your past. That's Gentile blood, by the way. Yeah. I don't care about your past sin. That's nothing okay. to me. True. Your faith cancels out everything. Your faith in me cancels out everything. Mm. That's the beauty of Jesus. Now the hateful say, wow. oh, well, you haven't been baptized on the right day. Or you haven't said the right prayers at the right time exactly. Of course you need to believe, pray in faith, accept Jesus with your mouth, believing, and get baptized. But that's not the point. The point is God knows your heart. He wants your heart. Thief on the cross, thief on the cross, thief on the cross, thief on the cross, thief Bingo. on the cross. Thief on the cross. What, Lord, I'm not worth this, but remember me in your kingdom. Oh, Jesus says, yes, you're in. <laughs> How beautiful. John, John, you're like, I've done all this stuff, but you know what? I believe that you're Lord. He's like, you're in. Bro, I, me too. Whatever you, I repent, take my life. I, I, I surrender to you. You're in, Brian. Write your name in the book. Anyway, we can keep going, but that's it, man. That's the, that's the answer. We just read it right here. It's not the law that saves you or makes you righteous in God's eyes, meaning perfect. It's wow. faith in the promised seed. I just think that 2 Kings 22, 8 wraps up the law perfectly. Mm. We, oh, man. No kidding. That's it. We they're, found the answer. Even though they're going to fail at the law, their expression of finding the Bible in the the crumbling dirt, I think it was, in the back of the castle somewhere. Yeah, deep in the – and they, they, they locked up the door. The king before him was like, nope, we're doing our own thing. That's the definition of everything this Galatians is talking about. I love it. I love it. They found the guardian. Mm. God, it's so good, right? Guardian. Wow, Brian Nights, you are just like the you Holy too. speaking, man. Let's go. I just He's, love it. I just, I'm, in, I'm in a trance right now. I love it. God is good. All right, let's uh, let's read the rest, and then um, we're on. We'll do 25. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. Boy, that's nice. For in Christ Jesus, you are all sons of God through faith. For as many as you, as were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Of course you can be a Jew by nationality. Of course you can be a Greek or a Gentile. Of course you can be male. There's still male. And of course there's female. He's saying that now we are one. That's it. Right? And 29 to finish it. Go ahead. Finish 29, John. Slam dunk it. Yes. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's offspring. Hires according to promise. Yeah. We are heir of the promise. We get the promise. Like an heir of the king, we get right. it all. Yeah. If you are Christ, that means if you're born again, if you are a Christian, true believer. Well, you know, Jesus is in you if you're a believer. So, Amen. yes, we, are, we have Christ in us. Think about it. I mean, it's like that it's amazing. You know, it fits that verse 29 here perfectly. Um, Perfect. Then you are Abraham's offspring. Look at that. So, so it's true. I am Abraham's offspring. How could you say that, John? You're a Gentile. Well, the Bible says right here in 29, and if you are Christ's, you know, if Christ is in you, if you, I don't mean to add to the Bible here, but if Christ is in you, you're a believer, you're in the, the family of Christ, comma, then you are Abraham's offspring. Wow. I'm in the line, baby. You're in the line. It even says, look, no more Jew or Greek. Of course, 
there are separate differences. But he's saying, you're in the covenant of God. Verse 28. But can I, can I just say something? Say it. And I know we got to go. And this is Yeah, we got to go right now. Don't have time for. But it, it goes back to what I say a lot. Is. Hold on. Let me just make sure I'm saying this correctly. All right. I'll just leave it alone. I don't have my thoughts. That's okay. We we can talk later. Yeah. Hey, Amen. What a promise, right? I mean, we brought so much out. The guardian of the of the people of God. Now we're free from the guardian, but we follow the, the law still with love. Now we have Jesus to guide us. We have the Holy Ghost to teach us. He's going to teach us the law. He's going to teach us the principles of the law. But now we're not subject to that, right? Because we don't have to follow it perfectly in order to be free. We are free in verse 29. If you're Abraham's, you're Abraham's seed because you are heirs. You are Jesus' son. You are born again. You are a believer. Listen, the Bible right now that's sitting on your bookshelf is 2 Kings 22.8. That yeah. never stops. Look, I've even been in my life where it's like you get the the you get lukewarm or even cold. You know, I've been there since 2016 getting saved to now, right? The water's lukewarm. And then you start reading the Bible. You find the Bible on the coffee table and you go, oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm not doing – now, of course, not only what the Old Testament says, but I'm not doing the New Testament of preaching the gospel – getting out there, saving souls, loving my neighbor, turning the other cheek, flipping a table when needed, standing up like Stephen. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Second Kings 22, eight, Lord, forgive me. Let's go. Come on, John. Yeah. Grab that Bible again. Second Kings 22, eight applies to us all. It probably actually almost maybe weekly. (laughs) Look, sometimes if you, it could be the second two days after you forgot, you've put it down. You're like, Oh, there it is again. I need it. I need it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that's so good. Like Mondays. Mondays in our men's group. So refreshing. Yeah. Well, I got to go. I, I We got to go. Oh, I got to get the fam here. It's way too late. Well, to, uh, uh, Bible studies, we did uh, Mark. He is risen. We did Jonah and the whale's belly. Um, and, uh, of course, we just got done with chapter three. Yeah, Galatians. Amazing. Write it in, right? Yes, I did. Write out. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for um, uh, chapter three of Galatians. We're so blessed to be able to come together and read, study, and walk. We are ready to take this chapter, your words, breathe through Paul, and now we are ready to go apply. We are ready to go do. Now that we've read, studied, and discussed, we are now ready to go do. Second Kings 22, eight. what a great Bible verse that you wrote, God, to remind us that we need to just keep the Bible close to us and to keep our eyes on heaven. And we're so grateful for that. So thank you for this word. Thank you for this chapter. Keep us on the narrow path. Keep our sword sharp. Yep. In Jesus, in Jesus' name, the great I am. Amen. 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 Oh, glory to God. Thanks, guys. Amen, amen, amen.